I was once asked, if you could take a look into the life and mind of one person from the past, who would it be? Instantly, my brain cracked open its spine and, and pages worth of influential people ran through my head like Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, John Calvin, even a Jeffrey Dahmer or Augustine, but strangely, my thoughts became obsessed with the idea of being invited into the heart of someone we all know as Judas, a man beckoned by the Son of God to follow him. Follow him like Twitter was reality. Paralyze his eyes on the heels of a God who had placed himself on the inside of a woman's stomach that he intricately created himself eternities before birth even existed. Judas walked with Jesus. I picture him Jewish. Cold colored hair, dark brown eyes, twinkling with deceit, heart beating with wonder towards his Christ, whose features were just like his. Could this man really be God? Is what I'm sure played this dark and eclipsed mind. He watched him. Watched as Mary's 30 something year old son shovel the remains of rocks and death into his hands called dirt. Bring forth spit from the same mouth that lit every star in the galaxy. He mixed them both. Painted them in the pupils of a man whose eyes were only acquainted with the canvas of black blind from birth. God was the first thing that man ever saw. His last name Iscariot, first name Judah, stood front row center to a concert of God's glory. I wonder if he saw himself in the scenario before him. Maybe not, but he continued to watch as Christ walk towards the cave of a man who had been dead for almost a week, with the heart that had not beat for four whole days, ears that will only work at the sound of something greater than death. Lazarus, come out, Jesus, yo, with the authority of the Alpha and Omega branded to his breath. A fraternity of power coming forth from the same voice that spoke everything into existence when nothing that existed, just him, Judas, saw a corpse come to life. A dead heart beat to the soundtrack of a, resur of a resurrection, the metaphor for why Jesus came right in front of his eyes. If I could watch him think, I don't think he saw just yet, yet he watched. As a year's salary of oil was worshipped onto the Son of Man's feet, Mary used her hair like a wash rag to wipe the foot of her Lord, and I wonder if Judas was confused. Confused at why this woman would give up so much just for Jesus. Could it be that her reverence was a sign that she might have seen this Nazarene called Christ for what he was worth, possibly, but he kept watching. He watched as the guards grabbed the man he'd identified with a kiss to prepare him for a death that the world deserved, unaware of the resurrection that only the elect would share. And if I could, I would assume that he looked into his palms. Followed his fingerprints to the 30 pieces of silver, laying dead in his hands with joy, tap dancing in the cemetery of his soul, ghosts of destruction rising up in his bones, those dark brown eyes staring at the receipt for what he just gave up. And I bet he didn't even see the reality of what he thought God was worth. Nothing. See, betrayal is easy when you kiss God goodbye in a heart that is only loyal to itself. As Judas, as Jesus was being led away into the cup of God's wrath, Judas crawled his head inside of a noose, and the truth is, I know he was sorry. His conscience made him conscious of the fact he had betrayed an innocent man, but the blindness in his mind didn't drive the navigation in his eyes to find that same man that was able to forgive him of all of his sins, so he made suicide his savior. As I watched the rope huck his throat, I just wish I could have let him borrow my eyes in hopes that he would finally see see that he was the blind man that needed the hands of Jesus to rapture the scales from his brown eyes like braille praise danced on God's fingertips. Let him rip my mind in hopes that he would have understood that he was a Lazarus by nature, dead, a corpse with sin, sleep in a cave of death, desperate for life. He walked with the one person who could save him from the pitch black of night underneath his eyelids for three whole years but try. Try asking a blind man to lift his eyes toward the sky and tell you the color of the sun. If he cannot see, he will never understand his need for light, so darkness will be all that he knows. As I watched the body of Judas dangling dead from the tree, reminiscent of the piece of fruit that birthed this inherent blindness in his genes, I actually saw myself hanging.